Hi everyone and welcome to this three-part video. So I've decided to make this series in a three-part video just like to make it possible to digest all the information in a better way. So in the first part I'll explain you how I've made the jute plate, so it's a biotex material, um, to create a plate using resin infusion and then I'll bond it with some honeycomb core in between just to get like good surfaces from both sides. So um, this will become a stiff plate that will be used to make a bullet bike board. So it's a Larry versus Harry cargo bike. And in part two, I'll explain you a bit more about like the processing of going from a, a raw plate to like the finished parts that I've uh, used um, as a topic. So this is the bike. Um, I'll go through some um, like how to finish it. I'm using some uh, big bonds, uh, threads into it. Then there's also like the V attachment between the front plate and the bottom plate, like you can see here. And then um, making sure like how to finish everything. And then in part three, I'll go a bit more like in detail about using the um, the, the epoxy resin, so the bio epoxy from Easy Composites, and what went wrong. So I've decided to also include the part where the parts went wrong and how you can get good results um, even though. So uh, it's very possible to get good results with it, but I share my thoughts on that later on in part three. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. So welcome to this first part. All links will be included in the description down below for part two and part three once they are uploaded. So in the first part, um, I'll go through the uh, infusion layup. So if you're quite familiar with this process, you can skip ahead. Uh, but I decided to include the entire process because I think new people interested in cargo bikes or making honeycomb cores uh, would be interested into it. So I've used I've used some jute um, material. So it's a bio material, and um, you can find it like more in Belgium in potato bags and things like that. But Easy Composite sells it as well on a full roll. Uh, starting from one we one meter in length. So it's quite similar to the jute, uh, to the flax. So you have jute and flax that are both bio materials. So I've wanted to make a plate using uh, only bio materials, but later on in the video, I'll explain why it was quite difficult because the bio resin uh, caused some problems with the infusion, but that will be more in part three. So the layup is jute, followed by carbon fiber, and I've used the black stuff here. So black stuff is a cheap carbon fiber from Easy Composites. I think they sell it at around 10 pounds uh, per meter, but you have to buy a roll of 10 meters uh, in one time, I think. The good thing is that it's for backing, um, as a backing material, it's quite good because it's just woven in like a faster way. Uh, so the quality of the carbon fiber is not diminished, but it's more the quality of the finish. So if you're using this as a backing layer, you can save some uh, some money by using this as a backing layer. Um, because like normally you would pay around 25 pounds for a 200 grams, uh, like in a good finish, a 3K um, twill weave. And here you're at, at about 10 pounds. So it's a, a saving in material cost here. So followed by the peel ply and then infusion mesh. I did also use some spirals for the inlet of the resin. And then you can see there's some breather just before the uh, outside, so the vacuum side of this infusion, followed by a bag just to seal and compress everything tightly against uh, each other. So uh, you will have a very compact weave. So here is the bio epoxy. So I think you mix it 100 by 40. I also did a video about um, this resin, if it's crystallizing after a while, how you can um, like uh, reverse this process and use the resin again. Um, but that video will be included on the top right. So here's where the infusion fails. So it's a very uh, fast kicking resin compared to the infusion resin that I'm normally using with the slow harner. But I'll share all, all my 
um, like findings and things that I found out using this resin in a video later on in part three. So here's the most common cause. It was like a, a basically more causes that made this fail uh, this project like uh, heat, the viscosity of the resin and uh, maybe as well the strength. So like you can see it's, I was kind of su surprised by having the jute and the carbon fiber being that flexible, uh, but I'll share more of my thoughts uh, in part three. So what I did is just repeat the same process. So the layup is exactly the same, but I'll be using the IN2 epoxy resin with a slow hardener. So you can see it right here. So on the right, uh, you see the IN2. So this is a regular epoxy, so it's not bio uh, based, um, but I've just wanted to like get further in the process and just trying to make that honeycomb core and finish that project like it is. But it's very possible like to change the resins going from a bio epoxy to a uh, regular infusion epoxy. So here's the mixture. I've just letting it degas. I didn't degas the full cup uh, because I didn't mind that much about like uh, air bubbles being trapped into the, the material because for me it was more like like first of all it was more like making a panel using the honeycomb in between and see if it's possible to bound, uh, bond them together. Uh, but as you will see further in part two, the results are quite good on this uh, honeycomb cord plate. So here's the infusion. Um, a small thing I changed with the uh, first infusion is making it more like a U-shape infusion. So you see the spiral going a bit further, just to be sure that this one meter of um, material would infuse quite well. So here we at at the end of the infusion and then you see the spiral distributing everything over the um, leftovers to be infused. This is the outlet. I've been using some reader fabric just to make sure that uh, I have like a, a small buffer uh, before everything going into the catch pot. So after that it's just closing the clamps and then you can see um, <laughs> I went to the haircutter, so a new haircut next day, and then I'm ready to um, unbag the part and remove the peel ply. So here you can see some stripes, mostly these stripes are um, a reference of unmolding uh, too early. So it might have been the resin being a bit too soft at this stage, but I just wanted to get further into the process of making this video and um, removed it. So as you can see, it's still a flexible plate, but that will be solved later on in, um, in bonding them together on a honeycomb core. The um, finish of the plate is pretty okay, but I didn't mind that much. I've been using a plate, so it's an aluminum plate on the bottom to do the infusion and was used multiple times with release agents. So these are the marks, but will be sanded out later on in part two. A thing I wanted to share as well is the spiral will leave a mark into the um, the fabric because it's that thin. So if you're making parts, try to avoid having the spiral tube onto your fabric and onto your part. That can cause some uh, some problems later on on the uh, on the backing of your parts with even print through on the surface of your part. So here I'm just using the templates to make sure that the both sides will perfectly fit after bonding them together on the honeycomb. So I'm just using a razor blade. Um, it's not to cut through, but it's just to leave a mark, and then I tape it off just to have like a nice reference when I'm using this uh, jigsaw to go through the, the entire plate and uh, cut, it in, cut it in half. So here you can see it's still very flexible um, and there's some like deformation, but it's mostly about not having um, a symmetrical layup. So this was a layup with the jute that will absorb more resin than the backing was with carbon fiber. If you want to have a flat plate, it's better to use some backing with jute as well. But in this phase, uh, knowing that I'll be bonding everything together and an extra layer of carbon fiber will be added, I decided just to go with two layers and then an extra layer for the, the bonding of the two plates that you will see a bit later in this video. So here's the honeycomb. So it's um, an aramid honeycomb. So it's very light. It has some 3D shapeabilities. So it's possible to go 3D, but try to avoid like sharp 90 degree corners or um, 
very complex 3D shapes. So here I'm just roughly measuring everything out. So uh, preparing the core um, and make sure that both sides are um, in full contact with that 3D core. So I'm laying down the first uh, half. I've got some um, black stuff, carbon fiber again. So it's the cheaper version of uh, carbon fiber uh, because it's a backing layer. So you won't see it. And it's more like making a, like a, a glue in between the both sides and the honeycomb. So I'm using the regular laminating epoxy with the fast hardener here. Um, just brushing everything on, making sure that everything is wet. Keep in mind that the good thing is that I've used some peel ply, making it like a very good bond in between the layers. So having peel ply avoids having to sand like the backing to get a, group, a good grip in between the new layer of carbon fiber and the honeycomb. So I'm just wetting it out, um, quite wet, just to make it sure that it will make a good bond and that it will be firmly pressed like slightly into the honeycomb to make a good bond. So I'm using a roller to remove all the resin and spread the resin evenly as well. So it's two functions of using that roller. Then I'm just applying the, um, the honeycomb core and it's, it's like a bit flexible. So you have to make sure that it's fully in, in like in a straight line on both sides. And then I'm just repeating the same step on the other side. So the full layup will be jute. Then you will have two times carbon fiber, then a honeycomb core in between and the same at the other side. So making it a symmetrical layup. And by having this sandwich structure, it also makes the, like the, the, the plates that were bending a bit in some corners flat again and um, like very straight. So here I'm just applying everything onto the, the boards and then some um, perforated release film is used just to avoid that the breeder fabric will be trapped into the resin that will come out. So by doing this, you also avoid having some marks onto your, um, onto your plate. And then it's just a matter of bagging everything again. Um, of course, this is within the uh, working time of the both sides of the carbon fiber. Just like to make a good glue in between both sides. So everything is tightly compressed now, just looking for some leaks and then you leave it overnight. And then the next day you're able to remove the part. So here I, I just had to do some touch-ups with some um, tacky tape because I think I had some leaks, um, but it's not that crucial to have like a full vacuum here. It just more about having like a vacuum to compress everything together. So this is the best way to make um, a plate that is with a good finish on both sides with the honeycomb in between. So this will give a lot of strength extra. So if you like this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment, subscribe, and yeah, make, make sure that you subscribe, subscribe for the next two videos. Thanks for watching.